My name is Kristen Baumgartner, and I'm with Varakis Blum Computer Consulting. Today, I will be reviewing the General Ledger module for Sage 100. Varakis Blum Computer Consulting has been selling and implementing Sage products for over 30 years and is one of the top Sage 100 solution providers in the country. We are dedicated to helping our clients continuously improve and have industry expertise that comes from years of experience and real world knowledge. In today's presentation, I'll be reviewing what the general ledger module is used for, the main data stored within the module, and also be reviewing the main transactions. GL is primarily used for the general ledger account setup and maintenance and includes, but is not limited to, definition of the GL account structure, segment structure, main account and sub account setup, Journal entries are also created in the GL module, and budgets can also be created, along with GL reporting options. General Ledger is the core Sage 100 module that all subsidiary modules will roll up to, and all Sage 100 customers will use GL for their chart of account information. Let's take a look at GL within the Sage environment. On the left-hand side, I have my modules listed out, and today we're going to be focused on General Ledger. I'm going to start off looking at our setup. In our account structure maintenance, this is where we can house how we are setting up our GL structure. In Sage 100, the GL can be set up to 32 characters and have up to nine individual segments. In my environment, I have a main account and followed by a department and a location breakout. The GL setup in areas like customers, warehouses, and product lines is able to drive the GL posting automatically. So setting up your account structure correctly is a core component of establishing your chart of accounts. Our main account maintenance allows us to hose to house our information for our individual main accounts within our chart of accounts. We're going to look at our inventory as an example. The main account is always the first segment in an account, and its size is defined in that chart of accounts, account structure maintenance we just looked at. Main accounts are used as the basis for creating your chart of accounts. The combination of a main account and a sub account will create that complete general ledger account. Here, we also have the ability to set up our sub account maintenance as well. Here in my environment, I also have, as I mentioned, department and location subaccount breakouts. If we look at our department, and again, look at an example of a subaccount that's already set up, you can see how this is delineating that segment of the subaccount in our GL. This short description that's listed here appends to the main account description when our accounts are generated. Now to set this up account by account would be pretty time consuming. Sage 100 has given us a utility to make this a little bit easier in our process. Under general ledger in our utilities, we do have the generate accounts utility. Here I can set a selection of accounts that I want to be automatically generated. For example, today we're gonna to look at one of our accounts and our main structure, and we're gonna focus on our others receivable. Here, I'm also going to say, instead of looking at a department, perhaps we wanna look at a location, and I would like to set up all of my locations for that associated department. If I focus on my accounting department again, I will take into account all of my locations in generating my chart of accounts. When I hit proceed, it, Sage will tell me the maximum number of accounts that will be generated. If I choose to, I can say yes and proceed. The accounts that were just generated, we can see in our account maintenance. If I look at my account listings, again, we're gonna target that 111 account as our main. These are my other receivables. And you can see here from our lookup, this is where we have those locations and that appended name associated to the new general ledger accounts I just created. Within general ledger, we also have the ability to create our journal entries. The general journal entry 
is used to enter and post journal entries that consist of details closely related to a single purpose, as well as adjustments and miscellaneous entries. I'm gonna use my source journal of AP as an example and create a new entry number. I can enter my posting date and my reversing date if this is a reversal, along with any comments that I would like. On my lines is where I would enter my account number followed by my dollar amounts for my debit and credit for both my debit account number and my credit account number for this journal entry. There are also the, there's ability to do the allocation entry. Now an allocation entry refers to when we are entering distributions from a source account to multiple destination accounts. In this case, I have some pre-existing examples and we're gonna take a look at rent. When I look at this particular allocation entry, we can see my source account and I'm also looking at my allocation method as percent. I do wanna point out that it can be set to an as quantity or as basis instead of percent as well. But for this example, we're going to focus on a percent. When I look at my lines, you can see how I have them broken out by the percents for this total allocation into my different account numbers, along with my account descriptions. There are two additional types of transactions in our journal entries. The first is a reoccurring journal entry. That's used to enter journal entries of fixed amounts that repeat each period. There's also a transaction journal entry. This is used for entries that include the cash account and the entry will also post to the bank reconciliation module. Within GL, Stage 100 also offers standard reports. Chart of accounts, general ledger trial balance are common reports that we will see most customers utilize. Stage 100 also gives us the ability to run financial reports that we can custom create. By using this, I'm actually going to launch into a wizard to create a new report. The pre-existing reports I've already created are listed here, and I could choose to run these both individually or as a group if I associated all reports into a particular group. I'm gonna clear these because we're gonna create a new financial report. This launches my wizard, and when I hit next, I can choose what kind of report I want to create. For our purposes, I'm gonna create a demo income statement. My report type will stay income statement, but you can see we've got quarterly, balance, trend, and cash flows also available. I can give this report a title and change it. I can also assign this to a report group if I wanted to run in a, in a series of reports. I can choose if this is a combined statement or if I wanna have a combined summary or also segment out by my department and location, again, tying to how my system is currently set up. We're gonna run a combined statement. I can choose what kind of column data I wish to print. And for our purposes, I'm gonna choose our actual, our prior year variance and variance percent. And I can again choose which financial periods I want to focus on. I'm gonna go period to date data only. Other options that I have is how I want to format how the information is gonna print on my report. How many decimal places I would like, if I would like a decimal separator, if I want to have negative values shown as perhaps in parentheses. I can also choose my decimal places for my percents. And perhaps here, I just want one decimal place. And if I want to choose that have that symbol present as well. This is where you can set up how you want that information on your report. I have the ability to choose if I'm going to take this information and use an existing budget against it. I can also choose to print my general ledger account numbers or print accounts with zero balance if these are options that I want. Creating footnotes is also available through this financial reports wizard. If there is something I would like to present on every page, I can choose to enter those comments in here and how I want my footnotes to be formatted. When we're looking at our selection criteria, 
This is where you can hard filter selections into the report you're creating, or you can choose to use the runtime ranges at the time of the report generation. Again, flexibility with how you're creating this particular report. When I'm all done creating my report, I can choose to print this financial report after I'm clicking finished, and we'll go ahead and take a look at that report that we just created. Again, I can choose my information for what I wanna be reporting on. And when I hit preview, it will show me an example of that report. This is my income statement demo. You can see that my percentages are showing just one decimal point. I have that percentage sign. I can choose to see my balances that are negative with those parentheses. I have my decimal places confirmed. Everything that I've chosen on how this report is set up is now shown based on this financial report. And again, you can see this was just added now to my existing reports that I'm able to use again without having to reconstruct everything from scratch. In GL, you're also able to set up budgets within this module, and you can actually have multiple budgets within Sage 100 GL. One of the other utilities I would like to point out as we looked at generating our accounts is the General Ledger Exchange, which is a wizard for the import and export of both your GL and budget information to have that in easily brought into your system or exported out of your Sage 100 environment. Change accounts is another utility because over time, different philosophies for the GL can develop and change. This utility allows us to delete, renumber, and merge our accounts to clean up our GL. This video has covered the basics of General Ledger Module for Sage 100. Thank you so much for your time today. And if you have additional questions on Sage 100 functionality, please reach out to the Baracus Blum Computer Consulting Team.